Hey there, pre-meds, and welcome to this video on the different names for DNA strands during transcription and how to identify correct sequences when asked about these strands on the MCAT. Let's get started. So whenever we talk about anything genetics related, you want to establish where we are in this giant category that is genetics. So for this video, we're in 1B molecular genetics, right, nucleotide level, and we're specifically talking about transcription. So what do we know about transcription? It's when we're converting DNA into RNA, and it's in the nucleus when we're talking about eukaryotes, which is going to be kind of your baseline on the MCAT. Okay, so now that we've established where we are, right, we're transcribing DNA into RNA so that it can then go and be translated into proteins in the cytosol. Now let's talk about a topic that does tend to come up on the MCAT and is a little confusing for students, which is what each DNA strand is called and how to identify the mRNA sequence that comes from each one of them. So I'm gonna start by giving the definitions and then we'll work through an MCAT style example. Let's go. So I'm gonna start by writing out a DNA strand from five prime to three prime. So here's my sequence. I'm going to write, let's see, A, T, G, A, T, C, T, C, G, and it's three prime at the end here. Okay, so go ahead, pause this video, and write the complementary strand to this DNA strand, because as we know, DNA has two strands that are complementary to each other. So quick review, go ahead and pause this video and write out the complementary strand to the one I've just written for you. Okay, so hopefully you've written out that strand and I'm gonna write it out here. We always start, if it's five prime on top, right, it's gonna be three prime on the complementary strand because they go in opposite directions, anti-parallel. And we always pair A's and T's together right so that would be ta and then we pair g's and c's right guanine and cytosine so i'm going to go ahead and write that in here and this will be five prime right they're always going in opposite directions on our double helix dna so this is just like a little snippet of dna right there's tons and tons of dna on every chromosome but we'll go ahead and say that this is one of the genes that we're going to be transcribing into proteins, very, very small gene, and we want to know how we're going to transcribe it and what that transcription, that RNA, looks like. But before we do, let's establish what each strand does in the context of transcription. So our 5' prime to 3' prime strand here is called the coding strand. It has two names. One of them is coding and the other is sense. Coding or sense strands, these guys are synonyms, right? You can hear it either way, it means the same thing. And this is always the one being read in the five prime to three prime direction, left to right when you're looking on the screen. All right, so that's gonna be our coding strand. And I'll explain what that means in a second. The bottom strand here, the one that's running three prime to five prime on the DNA is called our template strand or anti-sense strand and I've even seen some professors call it nonsense strand nonsense strand so if your professor called it that it all means the same thing template strand now just to confirm, this is only for transcription, all right? If you were talking about replication, right, when we replicate both strands of DNA in a semi-conservative manner, right, they're not going to be called coding or template strand. This is specifically for the process of transcription. That's why we want to differentiate what we're talking, which process we're talking about, okay? So we have both of these strands, and now we want to know, okay, well, how is RNA made from this DNA if we wanted to actively transcribe it? So RNA is transcribed by RNA polymerase protein, right? And so I'll draw a little RNA polymerase there, fill it in with green, make it the color. All right, so this is our RNA polymerase. And as with all polymerases, whether we're talking about transcription or replication, it's going to only read 
three prime to five prime direction. And unlike in replication, where we need both strands, this actually is great for us when we're talking about transcription because we're only making a single stranded RNA. So we only need one strand to read, and since we read three prime to five prime direction, we're just gonna go ahead and read that template strand. And that's why it's called the template, because the RNA polymerase uses it as a template to make our RNA. So now go ahead and draw in, pause this video again, and write in the complementary RNA sequence using our rules for RNA, which just to remind you is that uracil is used in place of thymine. All right, go ahead and pause the video, come back and check your answer. Okay, so we start five prime right whenever we're making a complementary strand, we flip the prime, and T pairs with A. A normally pairs with T, but because this is RNA, it's going to be U, right, uracil. And just as a kind of fact to know, the reason why the cell uses uracil in replace of thymine for RNA is because it's less stable. And we wanna degrade RNA pretty quickly as soon as it gets translated, right? We don't want RNA going out and churning out way more protein than we want. So it's gonna be degraded pretty quickly. And uracil is easier to degrade than thymine. And it makes sense that thymine's in our DNA because we don't want that to degrade easily. So if that helps you remember why we use uracil in place of thymine in RNA, that's why. Okay, let's continue our strand. So C pairs with G. Okay, so now we've written out our mRNA strand from this DNA snippet. All right, and I want you to take a second and I want you to look at our original coding strand, right, which we did not directly read from. Compare it to our RNA strand. What do you notice? Hopefully you notice that they're exactly the same with the exception of replacing the T's with the U's in RNA. So this is why it's called the sense and coding strand, right? Because it's literally the same strand, right? It reads the same sequence. It's just uracils instead of thymines. And that makes sense, right? Because they're both complementary to this template strand, so they would have the same sequence because we're just reading that complementary strand. So that's why it's called coding, and the trick on the MCAT is if they ask you, here's the coding strand, what's the mRNA that's produced from this gene? You literally just have to replace the U's with the T's and you'll get the mRNA strand. In reality, the coding strand has nothing to do with transcription. It's just chilling there, right? Because the mRNA gets made from the template strand and the RNA polymerase reading it. But for our purposes, it's really helpful to know the coding strand because it's going to be that same sequence. And we don't have to write out the whole complementary sequence like we do with the template strand. Okay, so now that we have the terms down, let's go ahead and do some practice.